So in chapter one, you learned how to create the types of distributions um, pictorially. Now we're going to have to decide um, which one of which numbers we should use to describe the distributions with numbers. So for the most part, you're going to be looking at the mean or the median, and later in the chapter, you're going to also want to look at quartiles. So to start us off, you have to first understand what symbols these are going to be seeing in the chapter. So this first symbol here that looks kind of like an E is called the Greek letter Greek letter sigma. Okay, the Greek letter sigma just means that it is the sum of numbers. Remember, sum means to add, so it's just going to say that you have to add a bunch of numbers. The next one is x sub 1. Well, that x just represents a data value or a data point or a number or whatever it is. And because it's the, the sub 1, that just means that it is the first value in a data set. The x sub i represents that it, again, is a value in the data set, but is the ith value in the data set. Now, that just means that you could have, it could say x sub 2 and it would be the second, x sub 3. I could just keep on changing. Okay, and then you're going to have n. Well, n represents the number of values in the data set. Okay, so when we put all of these together, you're going to see something that's in your book. Here you're going to see the notation in your book that has to deal with how to find um, the sum of all n values in a data set, where you will go from 1 to n, 1 being your first data set and n being however many, whatever um, values you go up to. So where there are 10 sets of numbers, you would go from 1 to 10. Okay, the important thing to know is that you're going to be doing the sum of these. Now here you have um, a bunch of data sets, a, excuse me, a data set with a bunch of data values. You already pretty much know how to calculate the mean, where you take all of the numbers, add them up, and divide by however many um, values there are. In this case, you would have taken all of these numbers here on the in the numerator, you would have added them up, which would equal 430, and you would divide by 10 because there are 10 of them. And the mean equals 43. You've learned how to do this in middle school, so I'm pretty confident that if given a calculator, you'd be able to calculate what the mean was of a particular data set. But you need to get in the habit of seeing it written a different way. Now, if you happen to look back on the screen from before that we just looked at here, where we take the sum of all n values in a data set, you're going to see this symbol again. And it's going to be in your textbook also where it is to find the mean. Okay, you're going to learn that we consider the mean called x with a bar on top. And we literally call that x bar. So you need to get in the habit of seeing if, it, if a problem just says find x bar, that that means you should find the mean of that data set. Now in order to find the mean of the data set x bar, remember you're going to add up all of the data points, however many there are. The first one plus the second one plus the third one plus the fourth one, and so on, all the way up to, in this case, the tenth one, or x sub n, meaning we don't know how many there are. You then divide by however many terms there are. To write that even more in compact notation, you're going to do your summation symbol. You're going to have your x sub i, because that tells you how many to go through. Then you are going to have um, your, n, excuse me, your i equals 1, because you start at 1 and you go to n. Okay, and you're going to basically take the sum of all the x values, or your data points, and you're going to multiply that by 1 over n, or just think of it, it's like dividing by n. Okay, so this equals your x bar. And it's very fancy notation, and you don't have to memorize the fancy notation, but you should know how to read it. Okay, so it's the summation of all of your data points, or your x sub i, from your first data point, 
which is the i equals 1, all the way up to however many data points you have, which is your n. And then you have to multiply that summation by 1 over n. Don't get too hung up on the notation um, as opposed to actually being able to calculate the mean. The other numerical value you'll be asked to find is the median. Okay, you're going to notice that the median is a little different in notation. We use a capital M to represent median. So remember, X bar represents mean, capital M represents median. So taking that same set of data that we had here, which was these numbers here in the numerator, we're going to find what the median is. Now the first thing you have to do is you need to order your data. If your data is not in order from least to greatest, you can't find the median. So right now we need to order that data. So here I have the numbers in order. After you have or put them in order from smallest to greatest, remember you want to now look and see how many of the data points are there. Well, we know from just looking up above that there are 10 sets of data. So we need to find that middle data point. Okay, if the data number of data points is even, you need to find the center of the data. So the mean is the, if it's an even number of data points, the mean, median, is the mean of the two center observations, or otherwise n plus 1 over 2, where n is how many data points you have. So we know there's 10, so 10 plus 1 is 11, 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. So that's why we would go over 5 and a half spaces and we would take the middle number there. So here we're not going to use 12, 24, 30, 35, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These two numbers here, 5 and 6, are between your... Um, are the numbers where between these two numbers you're going to find your mean. So you need to take the average of 45 and 48, which remember is going to equal 46.5. So in this situation, your mean would be 46.5. Because you have an even set of data, you have to find the average of your two center points. If we were to just get rid of one of those data points, Let's say we get rid of the 12 from our set of data and the eraser, there was no eraser button, so just ignore the crossouts. That means that we have an odd number of data points. Now since you have an odd number of data points, in order to find the median, remember, now you just have to actually find the center data entry or the center data observation. So, since there are 9 now, we would have, our, again, our n plus 1 over 2, which is 9 plus 1, which is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so you have to find the fifth one in. So, 24 is 1, 30 is 2, 35 is 3, 45 is 4, 48 is the fifth one in. So, if we had an odd set of data points, we would say that 48 was the median. So it all depends on if you have an even or an odd um, set of data points. Now that we've refreshed your memory as to how to find the mean and the median, you need to do a couple practice problems for calculating the mean and the median. So what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to use page 21 in your textbook, and I want you to use the data points from problem 111, and I want you to find the mean and the median of those data entries. So write this down so that you have it. You also need to use page 35, question 1.41, General Motors versus Toyota. And what I want you to do is find the mean and the median for both um, car companies to find out um, how many problems per hundreds of cars that they had. Um, so three problems basically to do because the second one has two parts to it. Um, so make sure you copy these down so that you make sure you get these done for homework um, for after the test. Okay. Um, and the next thing that we are going to go over is how do you know 
which one to use and what exactly does that mean. So we're going to be interpreting the mean and the median according to distributions.